welcome to today's lesson students i'm going to continue with the extra questions on the lesson heat that is unit 9 of your science textbook so extra question 26 nichrome is an alloy with high resistance that you all know so that is an alloy that is made up of nickel and chromium and you all, you all know that it's commonly used in electric appliances where you need to produce heat because of the high resistance there is high amount of heat generated during the function of the electric appliance. So electric iron is an electrical appliance that contains a nichrome coil. So as I told you electric iron is an example. The power supply is disconnected automatically in order to regulate the temperature of the electric iron. So you all know that students when you iron clothes, when you are ironing a lot of clothes at the same time, if the iron keeps on becoming hot, then there will be a point where it's very overheated, then it can damage the material of your clothing. So to prevent that, there is a regulator. You all know there is a light also. It comes on when the iron is working and the temperature is increasing. And once that maximum temperature is reached or if it is more than that, you can see the light go off. So you know the iron has stopped working but still there is heat. So then when you keep on ironing, again the heat is transferred to your clothes. The temperature of the iron decreases. After some time, when it comes to the minimum point to which it can drop, again the current starts flowing. You see the light bulb come on and you can see the iron working again. So, but continuously there will be the required amount of heat provided to you. That is how we set the temperature also. Depending on the material that we are going to iron, we change the temperature. So, accordingly in the iron, the temperature will be regulated. So here you can see the sub power supply is disconnected automatically in order to regulate the temperature of the electric iron. A simple diagram of the circuit is given below. So here is a circuit that you can see that is a simple diagram there. So here you can see students that is, this is a metal strip that expands less. So you are familiar with this particular structure structure that disconnects the power supply automatically it has two metals and here the top one you can see the metal strip that expands less and the one shown in black color that is the metal strip that expands more then there are the other parts here you can see the power supply the battery is shown to you here and this is the knobs that connect and allow the current to flow and when they need to disconnect or when the current supply has to be cut off, the connection between the two knobs is removed. They go far apart. So that means there is no complete circuit. There is no current flow. So that is how power supply is disconnected automatically. Then you all know this part is the holder that holds the bimetallic strip or the two metals connected together. That is the simple circuit that is given to you. You are familiar with this structure. We have discussed this in the lesson before. So now we will look at the questions related to this. The first question, name the structure shown in the diagram that is used to disconnect the power supply automatically. So you all know what that is. What is the name given to that? The bimetallic plate or bimetallic strip. So that is this structure bimetallic strip or bimetallic plate. Second question, show the change that takes place in the structure that disconnects power supply automatically when temperature increases. Copy the diagram in your answer paper. So they want you to copy this diagram and then they want you to show how the change occurs. So if we do that, what do you need to consider? You have to look at the two strips, this one metal strip that expands less and the black one the metal strip that expands more. So whatever the metal that expands more will curve outside. If it becomes like a U shape, the outermost curve 
will be the one that expands more and inside it will be the metal that expands less. So if you are to show this in a diagrammatic form, then we can, I will redraw it here. So you have this particular structure there. We need to copy everything. All these are okay. So then we have this. Then what will happen to this metallic plate? This is the one with less expansion. So that will be like that. So this is going to be the black color strip. And here we will have that trapped. So there are the two heads are disconnected. There will be no current flow. Is that okay students? So this part of course will be still in place. That is the part that connects it. So this is the important structure or the important observation that you have to show. So you can see here this has less expansion. This has more expansion. The length of this second strip is more. That's what you have to show there. So this is how you are supposed to draw and show the diagram to show how it changes when there is increase in temperature. So I am sure students, you were able to answer the two questions. We will continue to the next part of the question. Write the method of heat transfer that takes place in the above metallic strip. So what is the method of heat transfer that occurs there? In solids, it is conduction. So that is what you have to write here, conduction. Then the fourth one, heat is transferred in liquid and air by convection. That is the second method or another method of heat transfer. Write a difference between convection and the method mentioned in part 3 above. So between convection and conduction. Now just try to recall what we have discussed before. In conduction what happens? If you take a metal, there are the atoms as well as the free electrons. You supply heat to one end. What happens? The atoms start vibrating. At the same time, the free electrons start vibrating. Due to the vibration of these particles, the vibration leads to the increase in kinetic energy. The kinetic energy or the mean kinetic energy is the thermal energy. So when particles vibrate faster, they collide with each other and the number of collisions increase with the increase in temperature. Therefore, heat is conducted from one end to the other end due to the vibration of particles. That is how conduction takes place in solid. But if you take liquids and gases, what happens there? You supply heat from the bottom, particles absorb energy, they expand because of that the density decreases and they tend to rise up. The cool particles that are at the surface, they are more heavier, that is their density is higher. Because of that, they tend to move around. So there is a circulation of particles. Hot particles moving up, cool particles moving down. And that is what we call as convection current and the process is known as convection. So that is the difference. So here we can say in conduction, heat is transferred by the vibration of the constituent particles and the collisions among them. Whereas in convection, the particles rise up due to the expansion of either liquid or gases and that leads to convection current and that helps to transfer heat. So that is the difference that you have to write here. So we can say in conduction, the particles vibrate 
due to due to increase in mean kinetic energy or within brackets we can say thermal energy thermal energy this increases the 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 number of of collisions between the particles due to the vibration and collision of the particles of the medium heat is transferred from one end of the solid to the other end. But in liquids and gases, convection occurs by convection current. that is when heat is supplied the particles at the bottom of the container absorbs heat expand and the density decreases thus Therefore, hot particles move up while the cool particles move down words this is the convection 
dejar. That leads to heat transfer in liquids and gases. So here students, I have written a complete explanation. You all can even write it shorter. This is to give you all the full explanation. So if I go back to the answer again, the question was heat is transferred in liquid and air by convection. Write a difference between convection and the method mentioned in part 3 above. In conduction, the particles vibrate due to increase in mean kinetic energy, that is thermal energy. So, this increases the number of collisions between the particles and due to the vibration and collision of the particles of the medium, heat is transferred from one end of the solid to the other end. But in so here you can see, but in liquids and gases, convection occurs by convection currents. And what is convection current? That is when heat is supplied, the particles at the bottom of the container absorbs heat, they expand and the density decreases. Therefore, what happens? Hot particles move up while the cool particles move downwards. This is the convection current that leads to heat transfer in liquids and gases. So here as I told you all students, I have written the complete explanation as to what conduction and convection are. You can make it a little bit shorter if you all understand the concept clearly. So that gives the answer for this question. With that, I will move on to the next question. Extra question 27. The first one. Specify one advantage of sea breeze and land breeze. So, can you all remember what sea breeze and land breeze are? They are related to the specific heat capacities of water and earth. So, normally earth has a lower specific heat capacity compared to water. So, because of that during the daytime when there is sunlight falling, the earth warms up quickly. The temperature increases. And above the earth's surface, there is air. Air absorbs heat from the earth. It becomes hot and the warm air rises up due to the decrease in density. And there is a less density of air above the earth's surface. To fill that density or to fill up that uh, low pressure that is generated, air above the sea because the sea is still cooler why the specific heat capacity is less. So the water is cool and above the water, the air is also cool. So air mass above the water or sea flows towards the land. That is what we call as sea breeze. So sea breeze occurs during the daytime. But when it comes to night, because of the specific heat capacity, the land cools down quickly. Whereas water takes a longer time to become hot and it takes a longer time to cool down as well. So during the night time, the water will be warmer than the land. So because of that, air above water absorbs heat, it expands, density decreases and it rises up. So because of that, air pressure above the water surface or the sea surface will be less. So to balance the pressure, air mass that is above land which is now cooler flows towards the sea. That is what we call as land breeze and this occurs during the night time. So then what is the advantage? You all are familiar with that. You all know fishermen nowadays they use motor boats then of course it's easy for them even that can be facilitated to a certain extent but when they use owing boats or boats with oars or else boat with sails, then what happens is in the night time, they travel to the sea. So there the land breeze helps to push the boat towards the sea. Why the land breeze blows from land towards the sea. And the same way they fish 
to throughout the night and then they return to the land during the morning time at that time there is sea breeze blowing so from the sea towards the land again that helps the movement or transport of the boat from the sea towards the land so both sea breeze and land breeze they help the fishermen to go towards the sea and come back to the land from the sea so that is the advantage that you need to write down so specify one advantage each of sea breeze and land breeze so here we have sea breeze so we can say during the day time it helps fishermen to travel back towards the land from sea the same way land breeze helps the fisherman to travel towards the sea in a boat during night time so that is an advantage of both sea breeze and land breeze sea breeze during the day time it helps fishermen to travel back towards the land from the sea in the boat we can say in the boat whereas land breeze helps the fishermen to travel towards the sea in a boat during night time so that is how the land breeze and sea breeze become an advantage then we have another question state the methods of heat transfer that need a medium for heat transfer so the methods that need a medium for heat transfer to take place what are the methods conduction and convection conduction occurs in solids convection occurs in liquids and gases so answer to this question is conduction and convection you all know the third method radiation that is the method that does not need a medium for heat transfer or that can take place through the vacuum or space so with that students i will move on to the next question extra question 28 two electric kettles are shown in the figure given below so here there is a figure there are two electric kettles shown to you the basic function is the same we have already discussed that in electric appliances where there is heat generated there is a nichrome coil usually it's nichrome nickel and chromium together it's an alloy and the coil produces lot of heat due to its high resistance so if you look at the two diagrams here in the diagram you can see students the coil is be inside the cooker itself at the base bottom uh, of the cooker there is the coil on top of that there is the metal layer and into that only we take water so from here directly heat is transferred to water by conduction if you take this electric kettle here you can see there is like a hot plate at the bottom and the kettle is placed on that so the heating coil will be within this hot plate like structure and from there when the kettle is in contact with the hot plate heat will be transferred again by conduction from this surface to the other surface 
from their heat is conducted to water. So in both it is the same principle but the way the kettles have been made it is slightly different. Here the wire is directly connected attached to the kettle, electric kettle. So when you switch off the power, remove the plug, the wire is with the kettle. But here the kettle has no wire, wire is connected to the hot plate. So this is an additional advantage. You can move the kettle around without needing to move the wire. So that is the difference here but basic function is the same. So then 1 kilogram of water at 20 degrees Celsius in the kettle was heated to 100 degrees Celsius. So from 20 degrees Celsius it was heated to 100 degrees Celsius using the electric kettle. When a student tried to touch the body of the kettle, it was very hot. So if you touch this part, you can see it's a metallic part. Here also there will be a metallic body that will be very hot. But the handle was not hot. You can see here this is the handle. Here also this is the handle. Those are not hot. So this is the handle. This is the body and here also this is the handle and that is the body of the kettle. So what is the difference there student? In both the body is made up of metal. So that absorbs heat quickly, it conducts heat quickly and it becomes hot also quickly. Whereas the handle is made up of insulator materials. So they don't conduct or absorb heat that easily therefore they don't become hot. So that becomes an advantage here. So the questions given below are based on these observations. So they have given you some observations and they have given you some questions. We will answer them one by one. First one. Classify the body of the kettle and the handle based on their ability to conduct heat. What can you say? Body is a good conductor of heat and the handle is an insulator of heat. That is how we classify you know, because the body becomes hot, it conducts heat quickly whereas the handle it does not absorb or conduct heat. That is why we are able to hold the kettle otherwise it would be difficult for us. So that is what we have to write here. So body good conductor or you can even just say conductor and handle insulator. Then the second question. The body of the kettle was hot. What is the energy of the constituent particles gives rise to the temperature of the kettle? So if we say, now you all know that is a metal, the metal or a solid substance if it becomes hot means what happens there? The mean kinetic energy of the particles increase. That is what we call as thermal energy. So that is what they want you to write. The body of the kettle was hot. What is the energy of the constituent particles? So it is the mean kinetic energy mean kinetic or kinetic energy. The body of the kettle was hot. What is the energy of constituent particles gives rise to the temperature of the kettle? So the answer to that is mean kinetic energy. Then we will move on to the third question. The surface of the kettle is shiny. So the surface of the kettle is shiny. What is the significance of this? Now here this is an electric kettle students. Normally what we do is we use it to heat water. But at times when you don't want additional heat from the environment to enter into the container. What do we do? We need to prevent absorption of heat radiation. How can we prevent that? By making the surface shiny. Normally you all know black color of surfaces absorb heat radiation more. Whereas light color shiny smooth shiny surfaces reflect heat radiation more. They absorb heat radiation less. 
So here the significance is to prevent the absorption of heat radiation and reflect heat radiation more. So here we can say the surface of the kettle is shiny. What is the significance of this? This prevents the absorption of heat radiation from the environment. So this prevents the absorption of heat radiation from the environment by reflecting the heat waves. What is the other advantage? Now inside the electric kettle, the water is very, very hot. Now the wall is a solid. If there is conduction, then there will be heatless from the water to the environment. But if the inner wall of the kettle is shiny, then what will happen? It will reflect the radiated heat back into water. So that will help to retain the temperature of the water inside. At the same time, prevent absorption of heat from the environment. So we have to write that as well. So here we can say when the inner wall is shiny, it reflects heat radiation back into the kettle preventing heat loss from the liquid that is usually water to the environment. So here if I read the answer again students, this prevents the absorption of heat radiation from the environment by reflection, reflection, reflection of the heat waves. Then when the inner wall is shiny, it reflects heat radiation back into the kettle, preventing heat loss from the liquid that is water to the environment. So in this way, the liquid inside that is the water inside will retain the heat. At the same time, there will be no heat absorption from the environment. So no heat loss to the environment, the same way no heat absorption from the external environment. That is the reason why we have a shiny surface. The same thing you have seen in thermos flask, but there are students only the inner wall is shiny. The outer wall usually it's a plastic casing. So there, there is no way heat from the external environment can be absorbed in because usually the plastic or any other material that is used is an insulator material. So you all know that observation as well. So with that students, I will move on to the next question. You mentioned a mode of heat transfer in part 3 above. In what form does this heat transfer take place? So what did we discuss in the previous one? Heat radiation. In what form does this heat radiation take place? It is in the form of infrared rays 
or heat rays that is the electromagnetic radiation. So here the answer has to be electromagnetic radiation thick waves within brackets I will say IR or thermal radiation. If you write as electromagnetic waves that is fine to be more specific I have written but the type of electromagnetic wave is IR or thermal radiation or we call it as heat waves also. Then the fifth one there is a heating coil inside the kettle. So as I told you students here we have a heating coil. What is the significance of having the coil structure? What is the significance of having a coil structure? Now if you just have a long conductor like this. One thing the kettle has to be very long. It will be a larger structure. But even then the heat generated by that long conductor or the coil. Or let's say here it's not a coil. The metal is not enough to boil water quickly. But when you have a very long conductor then of course you need to accommodate that within that particular appliance. So to do that what they do is they have the long conductor but coil like that. So here the length is more, the resistance is more, so the heat generated is more and also to accommodate the longer length they have it in a coil structure so that they can produce enough heat to boil water quickly. Is that clear to you all? So here we can say when the length of the conductor increases the resistance increases that in turn increases the amount of heat generated. Conductor is coiled to accommodate its length within the kettle. So then there will be faster efficient boiling of water of water. So that is the significance of having a so here you can see there is a heating coil inside the kettle. What is the significance of having the coil structure? So that is what they want you to explain. When the length of the conductor increases, the resistance increases. That in turn increases the amount of heat generated. So then you can see. So conductor is coiled to accommodate its length within the kettle. So then there will be faster efficient boiling of water. So this is what you have to explain for these questions today. So with that I will move on to the next question.
extra question 29. So here again there is an activity. An activity was carried out by a group of students as I explained below. So the explanation is given to you. Three identical containers. So here there are identical containers were used for this activity. So here you can see students there are three containers the shape the size everything is the same. But immediately when you look at the diagram you can see their surface looks different. So there you can see they were labeled as A, B and C that is shown there. The outer surface of container A was painted in black. So here you can see this is black. This one. Then you can see while the outer surface of container B was painted white. So this is white. And then you can see and the outer surface of container C was polished well to make it shiny. So this is a shiny surface. So we have a container with black color surface, white color surface, shiny surface. So immediately you know what this activity is. It is related to absorption and reflection of heat radiation. So then if we look at the question. A hole was made on the lid of the containers and thermometers were inserted through them. So here you can see these are the thermometers. So the thermometers are given to you. So you all can see students sometimes they label the diagrams. Sometimes they give you the explanation without labeling. If you want, you can label it. Here I have done it so that it's easy for you to understand. But it's not a must to label the diagram unless they ask you to do it. But for your convenience, you can do that as well. The three containers were placed under direct sunlight. So here you can see for some time. The three containers were placed under direct sunlight for some time. So there is radiation coming from the sun that will fall on the three containers. And then what happens? The container absorbs and reflects heat. So what we are trying to observe is how they do that. The rise in thermometer readings were recorded. So here the observation will be rise in thermometer reading. So that is what the activity is. Now let's try to answer the questions related to this. The first question what will be the observation when the containers are kept close to each other in sunlight for a specific time? So what will you see? In the question it was said there will be change in temperature. You all know there will be an increase in temperature. Will the temperature increase in the same manner? No. The different containers A, B, C, the thermometers there will show difference, different increase in temperature. So that is what you have to that is what you have to write here. The thermometer readings readings will increase by different values. So there will be increase in temperature or increase in the thermometer reading but the values will be different. Then the second question, what is the method of heat transmission to the containers from the sun? What is the method? It is radiation. So here we can say radiation or you can write it as thermal radiation. Both are correct. Thermal radiation. Then we have the third part. Arrange the containers in the ascending order of the readings of the thermometers after being in the sun for some time. So ascending order means increasing order. Now if we look at the three containers, here you can see A is black color. 
So the surface is black in color. What happens to black color surfaces? They absorb heat more. So A is black. So black, it absorbs more heat reflects less. So then we have B, white. B, so white color, B absorbs less, reflects more. Absorbs less Reflex more. Then we have C, shiny surface. What does that do? It reflects even more than the white color surface. Absorbs very less. Very less and reflects more than white. So now you all know the difference. So that means in C, the increase in temperature will be the least. B will have a little higher increase, whereas A with the black color surface will show the highest increase in temperature. So here we need to arrange the containers in the ascending order of the readings of the thermometers after being in the sun for some time. So then it has to be, the black has to be the highest. So there it will be A and after black it will be B and the lowest increase in temperature will be shown by C. The shiny surface absorbs the least amount of heat. White surface absorbs a certain amount of heat, whereas the black color surface absorbs the highest amount of heat. So we have arranged the three containers in ascending order of the readings of the thermometers after being in the sun for some time. Is that clear to you also? Then? So then we will move on to the next question. What can you conclude from the above activity? So that uh, what I wrote in the previous slide, black absorbs the most amount of radiation, white absorbs the medium amount, whereas shiny surfaces reflect very high amount of radiation. So that is the conclusion we have to write. Black absorbs high amount of heat radiation while white absorbs less and Shiny surface reflects more heat radiation. So that is what we can conclude. Black absorbs high amount of heat radiation while white absorbs less and shiny surface reflects more heat radiation. Even here students, you can say black surface absorbs high amount of heat radiation while white surfaces absorb less and shiny surface reflects more heat radiation. So for all those, we can write surface, surface, surface. So that is the conclusion from the activity. Then we have the next question. As the second part of the experiment, the containers were filled with normal water. So initially the containers are hot, they are filled with normal water. They were kept in the shade for some time. 
what could be your observation? So when you take in normal water, the container will be hot but the water will be cool. So this is what happens. You have the container. Inside that you have water. Water. Less temperature. Whereas the container high temperature. Then what will happen? You know when there is temperature difference between two objects in contact, there will be heat transfer from the high temperature to the low temperature. So heat will be given from the container to water. So there we have the thermometer inside water now. So as you fill water, what will happen? Water will be at a lower temperature. Again you will see increase in the thermometer reading. But there, what will happen? As you can see, A would have already absorbed a high amount of heat, B less and C the least amount of heat. But at the same time, when it comes to losing by radiation or reflecting radiation, shiny surface will reflect radiation faster. So there, the temperature reading, thermometer readings will increase, but container C it will reach equilibrium faster. Whereas container B will take a little longer time and container A takes even more time to increase the temperature and reach the equilibrium. So there you can see as the second part of the experiment, the containers were filled with normal water. They were kept in the shade for some time. What could be your observation? Water has low temperature. Or we can say low temperature of water of water will increase and reach the equilibrium temperature. So then, depending on your observation, what is your final conclusion? What can we say? A absorbs more heat, reflects very less heat radiation. That is black color surface. Whereas white absorbs a certain amount and reflects a certain amount of heat radiation. Whereas C absorbs very less heat radiation. At the same time, they reflect more heat radiation. So that is what we can say here. Black color surface or black surface absorbs more heat radiation but reflects less heat radiation. Then white color surface or white surface absorbs less than black but white surface absorbs less, less than black but more than more than shiny surface It reflects more than black. Black but less than 
shiny surface. So one is about the black color surface, the other one is about the white color surface and finally we have to write about the shiny surface. Shiny surface absorbs very less radiation but reflects more radiation. So that is how the change occurs. So he also students as I told you the time taken to reach the equilibrium but the increase in temperature of water will be high when it comes to the black color container and it will be a medium value, middle value for the white color container and there will be the least increase in temperature when it reaches thermal equilibrium with the shiny container. So you all know why that happens because black absorb more heat it will give more heat to water. White absorb less heat, it will give less heat to water whereas the shiny surface absorb very less heat. So it will give less heat to water but that will take place in a faster time interval. So that is what we are trying to observe here. That is what I meant by reaching the thermal equilibrium. Increase in temperature is one thing, reaching the thermal equilibrium is another concept. So I am sure you all can understand what happens there. So if we go back and check the answer again, depending on your observation, what is your final conclusion? Black surface absorbs more heat radiation but reflects less heat radiation. White surface absorbs less than black but more than shiny surface. It reflects more than black but less than shiny surface. Whereas the shiny surface absorbs very less radiation but reflects more radiation. So that is the conclusion from this activity. So I am sure you all were also able to answer this question clearly. You would have written a similar answer. So I am sure it is correct. So with that students we will move on to the next question. Extra question 30. Diagram 1 shows an immersion heater placed inside a funnel containing ice. So here you can see students this is diagram 1. So there is a funnel with ice there. There is an immersion heater immersed in that. You can see that is connected to power supply and also you can see the water from the funnel is connected inside a beaker there. And there is an electronic balance also shown to you that is diagram 1. And here in diagram 2 there is another setup. We will see what that is. When ice melts the water is collected in a beaker that is again in diagram 1 I told you all that. The weight of water with the vessel is measured using the electronic balance. So here we have the electronic balance. This beaker or the vessel with water the way it is measured using the electronic balance. Then we have diagram 2. Diagram 2 shows the collected water being heated again and the change in mass recorded. So here again you can see the power supply is there. It's connected to the immersion heater. Now the immersion heater is placed inside the beaker containing water water that was collected from the first activity there or the diagram 1 and that vessel is kept on top of a triple beam, a beam balance, uh, it, it is a triple beam balance so it's kept on that then you can see the change in mass. So that is what is recorded, change in mass is recorded. So answer the questions based on this activity. You all can understand students what is happening here. When we provide heat using the immersion heater, ice will melt and it will become water. Water is collected in the beaker. Then we transfer the measure the mass of water and then we transfer it here. Keep it on top of the triple beam balance and a heater is placed there, immersion heater and heat is 
supplied by supplying electricity, then what will happen? Water will start boiling. Then you know what happens there. When water boils, water will be converted to steam, that is water vapor. So that is the activity. Now we will look at the questions. First one, name the change of state in diagram 1. In the first diagram, what is that? Melting of ice or fusion of ice. So that is what you have to write here. Name the change of state in diagram 1. Melting or fusion of ice. The state change is melting or fusion. Here since it's ice, I have mentioned it as fusion of ice. Then the second one. The temperature remains constant during the change mentioned above. Write the value of the temperature in the standard unit. So you all know ice melts at 0 degrees Celsius. And here they have asked you to write that temperature in the standard unit. What is that value? You all can remember it's 273.15 Kelvin. We can write it as 273 kelvins directly. If you can't remember the value, you know how to convert degree Celsius to kelvins by adding 273. So then also you will get the value as 273 kelvins. 273 kelvins. That is the melting point of ice. Then we have the third question. A reduction in mass was recorded during the activity shown in diagram 2. What is the reason? So you know the reason students. I told you all when it is provided with heat. What happens initially? The water is at 0 degree Celsius. Why? Initially the ice melts into water. So the temperature will be 0 degrees. When you provide heat, the temperature will increase from 0 degree Celsius to 100 degree Celsius. And once it comes to that 100 degrees Celsius, that is the boiling point, water will become steam. That is the conversion from liquid state to gaseous state. So the steam will be given out. The water vapor will go out of the container. That is why there is a decrease in the mass of water inside the beaker. So the reason is when... When water boils, it is converted to steam that is evolved from the vessel to the environment. Therefore, the mass of water in the vessel will decrease. So here again I have written the complete answer. When water boils it is converted to steam that is evolved from the vessel to the environment. So therefore the mass of water in the vessel will decrease. So that is the reason why you see a reduction in mass during the second activity. With that students, I will move on to the next question. What is the name given to the process that causes the reduction in mass mentioned above? We have already written the process. What is it? Boiling of water. So here the answer will be boiling of water. Of water. 
what is this process this is a process of vaporization the liquid becoming gas so that is vaporization but when it takes place at the boiling point we call it boiling of water then the fifth one write two differences between the process you mentioned in part 4 above and evaporation so this is what i just mentioned there is the process of vaporization vaporization is the conversion of liquid to gaseous state but this takes place in two methods or by two methods one is boiling the other one is evaporation so they want you to write two differences between boiling and evaporation i will do it in a table so we will draw a table so let's say this is boiling evaporation. So, what are the differences? Boiling will take place only at its boiling temperature whereas evaporation takes place at any temperature below the boiling temperature. Then you know for boiling we need to supply additional heat whereas evaporation takes place with the heat absorbed from the environment at room temperature as well. And also when boiling occurs, all the molecules from the bulk of the liquid can escape to the vapor state. Whereas in evaporation, only the molecules at the surface of the will, liquid will escape into the gaseous state. So those are the differences they want you to write two differences only. So, the first one I will write it as boiling occurs at the boiling point, point of the liquid whereas evaporation occurs at temperature so as below the boiling point point of the liquid so that is one difference They need to write the second difference. So here I will say particles from the bulk of the solution escape into the gaseous state. Here particles from only the surface can escape into the gaseous state. So those are the differences. So here, this is what you need to write. Boiling occurs at the boiling point of the liquid whereas evaporation occurs at temperatures below the boiling point of the liquid. And particles from the bulk of the solution escape into the gaseous state during boiling 
whereas particles only from the surface can escape into the gaseous state that is during evaporation. You can also write that boiling, for boiling we need to supply heat whereas for evaporation we do not need to supply heat. That is also a difference. So, with that students, I will finish this chapter. There are some more questions that is going to be discussed in the next chapter that will be the last chapter of this lesson.